Monday morning and um, the bell is going to ring in about five minutes and I'm already kind of agitated. Hold on a second. agitated at life in general uh, I didn't want to talk because I was in the pod and there's childcare people in there you know when you just have a series of little things that are just annoying you and not going right like you can't get your necklace on or I I just can't describe it just a bunch of random things were not going well while I was trying to get dressed and I ended up being a few minutes late I'm gonna take a deep breath and I'm gonna just assume that the day is gonna go up from here. Um, plus, I'm just, I think school's fine. Like, I know what I'm doing today. It's a minimum day, which is always nice, which means kids get out early and we get a little bit more prep time after school. But life stress is just stressing me out. Um, this weekend we had, they were calling it Hurricane Hillary. Um, but I think it was more of a tropical storm is what they're calling it now. So this weekend, I was just at home because it was just raining and all of that. Um, I don't live in the parts that flooded or anything like that. So it wasn't a, a major thing for me. Um, so I spent my whole weekend indoors watching Dawson's Creek. Saturday, I had zero energy. So literally just took a series of naps and then and went to the grocery store. And then Sunday, I spent my day making sure my grades were up to date. So here I am on Monday, I'm making the, the best of it. Um, I'm gonna try and vlog throughout the day. To be quite honest with you, I have vlogged for the past two weeks and just couldn't get the footage together and upload it. And so that footage has since been deleted. I had footage from the first day of school, the first few days, and I just couldn't get it together. So I'm really gonna commit to making this vlog actually show up for you guys. So fingers crossed. Um, it's 128. I was going to check in with you, but I just got a text message from a teacher on campus and it's a slight leadership crisis. So I'm going to give her a call and see if we can figure that out. And then I will check in with you guys. Okay. Well, I just called and the person I need to speak to is not picking up. Um, hopefully they call me back, but it's 1:30. School was out at one. I have after school duty this week. So I have to do that. Stop by the office and all of that. Um, today was okay. It didn't go the way I was hoping, um, primarily because as I thought would be the case, a good chunk of my students were absent. I, when This morning, when I realized school for this district wasn't gonna be canceled, I just had a feeling that a lot of parents were just gonna keep their kids home anyway because they felt like that's what they needed to do. Not that this tropical storm wasn't a big deal, but it's, it, it, what was going on this morning in my humble opinion didn't necessarily warrant kids needing to stay home because the weather forecast showed that the rain would be totally gone by late morning or early afternoon and so right now it's sunny and dry you wouldn't have known that we were in a tropical storm yesterday but needless to say quite a few kids were missing and it was a minimum day and there were a couple of random housekeeping things that the school needed me to do so I, it's like I didn't want to start anything heavy because groups were missing group members um, So what we ended up doing today is we just did the weekend wrap. I introduced that to them last week I love vocabulary for that and many other things. I always show them the weekend wrap on Monday They take the quiz and I always let them know that the weekend wrap quizzes are really like easy buffer quizzes To kind of keep their social studies grade up what they were supposed to do in history today was to start working in their groups on their Native American group that they're gonna be responsible for creating a poster for. Um, and each group is just focusing on a different region. Like one group is fo focusing on American Indians of the Arctic, another group is focusing on American Indians of the Southwest, and so on. So they're gonna create a poster, and then we're gonna use a strategy that I learned again in my training with Dr. Holly over the summer. Um, called graffiti walk I think where the posters are going to be put up and then students are going to walk around and learn about each cultural group through the posters I'm doing that this year because last year going over the different um, Native American groups across North America took up a lot of time and caused me to not get as far as I wanted to in history 
on top of the fact that as a fifth grade teacher and a teacher that has taught fourth grade, a lot of this stuff should have been taught in elementary school. I know that that doesn't necessarily mean that it was, but I basically just want the kids to understand the premise that Christopher Columbus or none of the European explorers discovered America, that there were indigenous people living here, and that while they had a lot of things in common, each group had its own different set of cultural practices based on where they lived. So we're finding a way to streamline that because last year that took several days to go through, and I don't wanna do that, I don't wanna spend that much time on it this year because I really wanna get into the thick of um, history. Not that that's not history, that sounds wrong, but I hopefully you understand what I mean. Um, but that didn't happen. All we did was the weekend wrap, and then in language arts, I was supposed to introduce story number two in this liter literary analysis unit I've been working through. I bought this from Teachers Pay Teachers from The Hungry Teacher, and so far I've really liked it. It's a whole unit. It's gonna take, I think, a total of four to five weeks, and it's just showing and teaching kids in little pieces all the things that are involved in a literary analysis. So last week we read the short story, Fish Cheeks, and every day there's a lesson that kind of adds on to the previous day. So, so far we've talked about like annotating, we've talked about identifying themes and how do you do that. We've talked about symbolism, we've talked about author's craft, um, and I think that's it. And so we did all of that with Fish Cheeks and all they've done in terms of writing is they had to write like an introductory paragraph for that story um, where they learned that in their introduction, yes, they're gonna briefly summarize what they've read, but they need to make a claim about the theme. So they've done that. And then this week we're gonna read the second story, which is called, I think, Seventh Grade by Gary Soto. Again, I didn't want to start that story because so many kids were absent. So what we ended up doing was reading more of Clap When You Land. We have started this book. I think we started this the second week. Um, some of it we're able to read in class together. Whatever we don't get to in class, they know they have to read it independently. And so far I've been giving them a quiz once a week um, based on the section that I assigned them. And they have a little novel study assignment um, that I bought from read it, write it, learn it. Um, and so far they seem to be enjoying the book. And that is really all that we got through today and I ready testing. So um, my goal with the time that I have after school is there is a quiz that I wanna grade from last Friday. I need to look at some leadership stuff um, because leadership for me this year has really been amped up through my own doing. Hold on, I think that person is, um, they're gonna call me back. Um, leadership is amping up because I just want the campus to have more opportunities for students to engage. Um, but with that amping up requires a lot more planning and preparing on my end. So I need to kind of look at that. So that's it. The highlight of the day is we got an extra 10 minutes of lunch. The eighth graders have had lunch with no incident for 10 days straight. And whenever they do that, they get an extra 10 minutes of lunch and the teachers get an extra 10 minutes of lunch, which is great. So yeah. That's what's up. I'm gonna get some work done, wait on this phone call, and uh, go from there. The day has gotten better. The, the, the morning started off rough. Um, it's gotten better. One of the issues I'm currently battling is I desperately need my nails done, and I can't go until Friday. This nail, the gel is lifting up. This nail, my nail is splitting from the gel. I don't know if you can see. You can't, but it's splitting. And my nails by themselves are very thin, so they need this layer of protection. Um, so I'm still dealing with that. But other than that, things are better. So I am currently in the process of stapling the stories, the short story that we're gonna read as the second story for our literary analysis um, tomorrow. I'm getting those stapled together. I don't know if I mentioned, but it's a story called Seventh Grade by Gary Soto, haven't read it before. This one is, I would say, significantly longer than the first story. Fish Cheeks is basically a one-page story. This one is several pages, which I think is probably a good thing, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but I figured while I was doing this, I would also kind of check in with how the year is going, because over the, 
I think I mentioned earlier today, I have taken a lot of footage in the past couple of weeks and I just haven't been able to upload it. And there is a big part of me that's like, for whatever reason, it is just harder nowadays for me to vlog and upload on a regular basis. And I don't really know if it's just because I'm busier, which I don't think that it's that. I don't think I'm significantly more busy than I have been in the past several years that I've been vlogging. Um, but what I do think it is, is that I'm just being better about like, I don't know if boundaries is the right word, but really paying attention to not overworking myself or really allowing myself to kind of step back when things feel like it's too much. Um, and so, whereas in the past, I would have picked up the camera and just kind of muscled through and like <laughs> bent up, making sure I was getting everything done from classroom stuff to editing and uploading. Now I'm kind of like mentally and emotionally, I don't feel like I can handle that, so I just won't do it. Um, like I could not bring myself to get all that footage together and edit it this weekend because I was just exhausted on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I had to make sure I had things ready for this week and today. Um, but anyway, enough about that. Um, as far as how the school year is going so far, I, am, I think it's going well. Both Taylor and I enjoy our classes. We have about 27 students in each, um, which is small. Our colleagues that also teach eighth grade and other grade levels have 30 plus. Our class is a little bit smaller because we have um, we work with students that are on IEPs, which stands for Individualized Education Program, and those are usually um, reserved for students that have like um, if they have a learning disability or if they need additional support. We have some of those students in our class, and then they tend to make those classes smaller because the demands of those classes tend to be higher when it comes to supporting those kids in the ways that they need. Um, the, the hardest part at the beginning of the year is just remembering how well you had your kids last year trained and remembering that you have to retrain a whole nother set of kids to your expectations, what you want, what you don't want, how your classroom's organized, what you expect when they complete assignments. So we're still kind of in that phase. Um, and so Taylor and I had to tell both classes today, like we are both very meticulous when we're grading things. Um, we're gonna read what you wrote, we're going to double check and cross reference. I told them we love a good receipt. Um, so they're adjusting to that. And then there's some things that Taylor and I have decided that we're gonna be um, much more hard nosed about this year that maybe we've been less rigid about in the past. One of which is the kids clicking the turn in button on Google Classroom. Like when they complete an assignment and it's done, even though I can see it, they need to actually click that button for me to put the grade in. That's to get them ready for high school because the high school they feed into, they use, I think it's called Canvas, and they have to click that button. Um, we're stripping down how, how long we take late work. It used to be progressive, meaning that the... Oh, my battery just ran out and now I'm on my phone. So if you notice a change in the way things look, that's why I need a new battery because it's not keeping its charge at all. Um... I think I was talking about the late policy. So it used to be first trimester, we would take it up to seven days late. Then second trimester, it would go down to two days. And then in third trimester, we didn't take any late work again. Um, the intent is to prepare them for high school. This year, it's just 48 hours period. And that includes weekends. So if something's due Friday, you have 48 hours and those 48 hours occur over the weekend and you have to turn it in. And in order for us to look at it, they need to complete a late grade request form, which is an idea that I saw on TikTok. It is essentially a Google form that asks them basic information, their name, why are you turning this in late? What is the specifics of the assignment? Like what, what was it? When was it due? And they know that I will only grade something late if they've completed that form. And that I won't really look at late work except for on Thursdays. So we're really being sticklers about that. And this year with IXL, I'm assigning the lessons to them. IXL is a program where it's designed to like reinforce skills that kids need to practice with. Last year they took the diagnostic and then I let IXL assign the skills to them. This year I'm assigning instead of three, five skills. So one skill a day and um, they have to get a SMART score of 80 or higher. And if they can't get to the SMART score, which can happen for some kids depending on the topic, 
then they have to show that they worked on that skill for 30 minutes before kind of saying, I can't, I'm not working on this skill anymore. And then they have to attach screenshots to show their work. So not that much different, but I think just being a lot more like, <laughs> this is what you must do. Um, but other than that, I think it's going okay. My first week, I didn't feel like I had my rhythm. I just kind of felt like a little disheveled at times. Last week, I feel like I really was like, okay, <laughs> this is what I do. This is how things go. Um, so yeah, it's been good so far. So um, I'm stapling these papers. I, before this, I make my slides for tomorrow. I usually make that before I go home. And then once I make the slide, I make sure that whatever I need to have on Google Classroom is scheduled or there in draft mode so that I'm ready for tomorrow. So I've done that. And it's, what time is it? It's 2.30. So I feel like I'm using my time wisely, so. It's five o'clock now, and I must admit, I've kind of wasted a little, not wasted, it's not a waste. Um, I spent a little bit of time <laughs> socializing with Taylor and two other girls that we work with across the way. Um, and then I came back, I finished entering the quiz that I wanted to enter, and then Taylor and I just made a TikTok, priorities. And now I'm gonna go home, but before I do, I have to stop at Target to do a quick pickup. Um, but the good news is, is I accomplished everything I, at bare minimum, wanted to accomplish. There's a couple of emails on my to-do list that I haven't done, but I'm gonna do that from home. So I'm just packing up, and just an update. So far, I am loving my backpack. Here it is. This is the backpack I showed, I think, in the last vlog from, I think it's called Poppies and Peony. And I'm really liking the backpack life. I have been bringing my laptop with me to school. I've been carrying it in this laptop case from Sheet Geeks. And I have no regrets. So I'm gonna pack up. What's nice about this is I can put my little, let's see if this one will my little iced coffee cup in the pocket and be about my merry way. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna head home. We'll head to Target and then head home, send some emails look at some leadership stuff from there. And I'm not gonna feel bad about socializing because sometimes you need to socialize to get through some, some days. So that was my Monday. I may or may not check in when I get home, but if not today, I'm gonna definitely try tomorrow. We're not gonna keep vlogging footage and then not uploading it. So I will see you when I see you. Good morning, it is Tuesday. It's 8.34, I'm on my prep period, and I have, I'm a, it's about halfway over. I just spent some time, um, not, I mean, running around, doing things I needed to do. And now I think what I'm going to do is print out my iReady results because I'm gonna change my seating chart. So I have my classes sit in groups of four, and they are strategically placed, like they're mixed ability groups, basically. And so I always use their iReady scores to kind of like rank them so that I know and have a good sense that the, the groups that I put together have mixed ability levels so that they could help each other when necessary because I'm only one teacher and um, I can't get around to everybody. So I'm gonna do that and I need to do that because I we've had some slight class changes like Taylor and I have swapped kids from her homeroom class to mine just because the dynamic of the class and so now I need to divvy up the groups a little bit better because we have seven table groups but I had six groups occupied and one group was not but now that we've added a couple more kids I have one really large group that now needs to be broken up and since I'm gonna do that I figured I might as well just restructure things now that I have I ready scores so that's what I'm doing um, as far as today so far <laughs> I woke up at 420 in the morning upset as always but thankful to be alive and worked out Tuesdays are my treadmill days. So I do a 30 minute run and then a 30 minute walk on an incline. And then I had to go to Starbucks afterwards because I'm out of coffee at my house. And then I came here and took attendance basically, showed the student newscast and now I'm on my prep period. So um, my first class of the day is gonna be leadership. We have committees this year, which has been 
critical um, for my organization and me feeling like I can get multiple things done at once. And it's kind of unfortunate that it took me <laughs> this long to figure it out. Um, and so I'll just show you the slides. So you can see the committees and what we have planned for today. So here's a slide. Tuesdays are scheduled work days. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but there's a public relations committee this needs to be bolded. Today they need to edit and send out the Who's House video for a teacher that we have on campus. There's a cultural inclusion committee. They're in the process of researching and pulling materials for Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, there's a student recognition committee. They're creating a Google form because I would like to highlight teachers that identify as part of the Hispanic community so that we can post them on our social media accounts. Um, Oh, that one, student recognition. But we also have a staff one as well, same thing. Um, with the student one, we just have to make sure we're not highlighting any student whose parents said they, don't, they do not want their child's picture taken. And we have a spreadsheet to cross-reference that, I believe. The tech department is working on the upcoming sixth grade rally. They need to email the principal and PE teachers about the fact that we need the screen and projector for the rally. And we need to... We need to start recording a video and we need the video to look like it's a YouTube video. So they're researching how to do that. And then we have a social media committee and I need to decide who's gonna manage the TikTok and Instagram account. That basically means they're just the one posting with my approval and um, that takes that off of my shoulders. And then we are having Club Rush next week, which is new for us. It's something I'm bringing to campus, where basically we introduce the clubs that we're gonna offer this year. We haven't had clubs on campus for a while, and I wanted to bring them back for more opportunities for students to engage in school. And so this week, we're just gonna introduce the clubs that we have scheduled to be offered this year. Um, and we're calling that Club Rush Week. So in our little student newscast every morning, they're gonna, the students are gonna be provided information on the clubs. And then we have a Start With Hello Week coming up. That is ran by our school counselor. There's a week of activities. And um, I want the social media committee to start creating social media posts to promote that. So that's what we're doing there. That's what's in my immediate future. Um, I'm gonna get off the camera right now, but I wanted to say hello, but I also wanna make sure I have time to make the seating chart. And then I'll definitely check in with you guys later on today and either tell you how the day is going or how the day went. Okay, it's 4.02. Oh, um, after school, and to sum up the day, all in all, it went well. I do recall vlogging this morning, but I think I was just saying good morning. I don't think I gave a whole lot of detail. Um, so, how the day went, I think, is what I said I was going to do. It went really well. Um, I got everything accomplished on my daily slide. One of the things that I know I need to personally work on this year, and I may have said this yesterday, I can't remember, is that I just need to be more efficient with my time or more mindful so that I don't feel like I'm perpetually trying to catch up. Now, I know it's going to be impossible for me not to fall behind my quote unquote lesson plans because that's just the way things go. You think something's gonna take X number of minutes or days and it takes more or less. Um, but some of it I feel like is within my control, just being like very like, we gotta keep moving. So today, um, the main things that I wanted to get through is they are working on iReady testing and that's not in my plans, but in language arts, I wanted to um, have them take the clap when you land quiz number two, which they did, and then read the second story in this literary analysis unit that we are doing from The Hungry Teacher and annotate that, which we did. It was just kind of like a first read. And then in history, at least start or talk about this um, poster that they have to create. And we kind of did that. We definitely started the process in my homeroom class and ran out of time in my switch class. Um, and that always seems to happen. I think just because it's after lunch and it takes a minute for them to come in after lunch, like simmer and settle down so we lose minutes there. So this year I've been using these slides from, oh, from Too Cool for Middle School. I tend to change them every year, it seems like, and then I change them by season. I like this one because there's it's just very straightforward. 
Like you'd be surprised at the eighth grade level that kids need to know that this is classwork and you still need to explain to them that this is just what my intentions are for the day while you're in here, but this is homework and this is what you should be writing down. And then these are just reminders, not necessarily homework, but something you want them to keep in mind. So I put that up and when I feel like I've got, or when days come, something just fell and I accomplished all those things I feel successful so with the literary analysis unit I can't remember if I mentioned this yesterday but it's a unit that I purchased on teachers pay teachers I want to say it was maybe $30 but we get $100 reimbursed to us by the school and so that's where that money is going to come from and it just slowly walks them through a series of lessons over the course of I think five weeks and it all builds on like just the skill of writing a good literary analysis and so one lesson might just teach them about symbolism one lesson is about um, identifying theme one lesson is about author's craft and it comes with resources and slides and all of that the only downfall is that the slides are just PDF views of a PowerPoint, so you can't scroll back and forth, which meant for me, I ended up being tied to this computer the first day, and then I soon realized I'm gonna have to remake these slides on Canva so that I can move around with my remote. So we read the first week, which or the first story, which is Fish Cheeks, spent about a week annotating analyzing and all of that and then today we read the second story for the first time which is called the seventh grade by gary soto and at the end of it they're going to write a literary analysis where they're comparing these two stories to some degree so we got that done they took their clap when you land quiz we're about 150 pages into the book just shy of that and the quiz questions i'm using just came straight from another tpt product that i found it's not perfect but it made my life easier and i just converted all those questions to a google form just for the ease of it i have been giving them the questions ahead of time and i have two versions of the quiz so that they're slightly different from each other in case someone from homeroom wanted to share answers i don't know um and so the quiz questions i just type up on a canva pdf let's see if i have it saved i don't have it saved there but it looks like this i just posted the new ones for next week's quiz what week is this um and it's literally all the questions and they are allowed to take notes on these questions as detailed as they want and they can use the questions on their quiz and i tell them if you take really good notes come the quiz you're just typing your notes onto the quiz of course some kids are doing really well doing this and some are not we are reading some of this together in class and i try to read as much as possible but i also have to do the like the actual core curriculum so they are responsible for doing some of the reading on their own i would love if we can do it all together but we can't so that quiz was taken today they've taken one i graded that first one and it was kind of 50 50. hopefully the kids that didn't do well the first one realize oh i kind of need to take notes and or pay attention for this quiz and the quizzes fall every tuesday and every week they have like a range that they need to read up to and then they have this novel study from read it write it learn it that asks them to do different things like analyze the setting analyze the characters and then incorporate text evidence then in history we are going to succinctly go over the first chapter in tci that just reviews all the different american indian groups that were in north america each group has been assigned one they're going to create a poster and then the posters are going to be presented using a structure called graffiti talk which is what i something that I got from the training I went to this summer and it is a strategy that is culturally and linguistically responsive on these slides that I'm making as I go I give the name of the structure tell them that it's validating and affirming kinesthetic learners spontaneous learners sociocentric learners um, those that have dynamic attention span etc and then I give the steps there's gonna be posters around the room um, with prompts and then I'm gonna give them the signal to go to the poster of their choosing, write or draw a response. Your goal is to get to as many posters as possible with the time given. It's not expected that you get to all of them. As a class, we will discuss our pro responses to the prompts. I'm gonna kind of adjust this a little bit because I do actually want them to go to all the posters because I want them to learn about each group. Um, but tomorrow they're just working on getting those posters together. 
and that was really all that we had time for today so um as far as i'm concerned my responsibilities in this room are done my slides for tomorrow tomorrow are up the things that were on my checklist to do i did my grades are updated and i have an appointment to get to at five and i need to leave at about 4 30. i did start therapy this year this is my second appointment i'm obviously not going to get into the details of what i'm talking about in therapy but I feel good about it. I feel like this was something good for me to do to kind of help me manage stress and thoughts and feelings um, with just a neutral party. And I know that it's not gonna hurt me in any way. It's only going to help me. So it took me a minute to find a therapist that I thought would be a good fit and I found one. Um, so I'm gonna go to that. That appointment's at five and then I'm gonna go home. And I don't think I'm gonna do any work because I don't want to. And by the time I get home, it's gonna be like six. So. That's it. Good day. Um, and I guess I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning. I'm vlogging in my car with my phone in a less than preferable setup. It's Friday morning. And that is the one thing I miss about my old car, which, which was a Volkswagen Tiguan versus this car, which is an Acura MDX, which I love. But my Volkswagen had this nice little spot where I could put my iPad in it and film in the car using that. And this car just does not have that. And it doesn't really have anything close to it. So once again, you guys are dangling from my rear view mirror because I refuse to put like a mounted um, phone holder on my windshield or on my dashboard. So if it's wobbly or just not good quality, that's why I'm on my phone. Um, it's Friday morning, woke up at 420. I did my workout. I had to cut it short because last night after work, I went to my brother's house, him and his wife just bought their first home and they've officially moved in. So my parents and I and Woofie went to visit and see their new house all moved in. And then on the way home, my gas light came on. And I get Starbucks on Fridays. And so this morning I had to cut my workout short. I had to do 45 minutes and cut the ab workout so that I would have enough time to get gas as well as get my Starbucks. Um, and it's good that I cut it short because this workout this morning, I literally was just surviving through it. I didn't have the energy. My body is tired, I think maybe from yesterday's workout. And so I just was pedaling just to get through the class. I didn't even follow all the directions because I really just couldn't. So um, I did that, got dressed, and now I'm on my way to work. I'm actually a couple minutes late. Let's taste my Starbucks. I really haven't tasted it yet. See, that's an eight. Um, so I always get the Starbucks right after my workout. And I just put it in the refrigerator because Starbucks on Friday by my house is a madhouse. So I'm on my way to work. It's going to be a long day because after work, I have a manicure appointment, which is not like a, well, it's not work, but this camera is crooked. And I, once again, I apologize. Um, it's not work, but I go relatively far to get my manicure. It's about 30-ish minutes from my house with no traffic but with traffic it's going to be a good 40 to 45 minutes and then the manicurist is very meticulous especially if I give her designs so that's going to be a couple hours and then I'm going to drive home and so I probably won't get home until 7 30-ish I'm going to try and leave school right at contract time so I have enough time to go home walk woofy and then just leave but we'll see what happens so as far as the day is concerned i'm about to head in let me switch lanes here um and today we're gonna start well today one class is behind the other um we've been working in social studies on just streamlining lesson one or chapter one in TCI where they're learning about the different Native American groups and how they lived and how their lifestyle was really um, based on the region they were in. So they created these posters. Yesterday, one class was able to do the graffiti walk. I think I talked about that earlier in the week, but the other class wasn't. My switch class, just they always lose a little bit of time because they're transitioning from lunch 
and that takes a little bit of time. So they were finishing up their posters yesterday. They'll get a little bit of time today and then they should be able to do the graffiti walk today. And I haven't decided if I wanna just keep going with the class that's ahead or do I wanna kind of pause so that the two classes stay on track with each other. Um, I haven't decided, but that's what's happening in history. Language arts, we're continuing this literary analysis unit. We're supposed to read a third story by an author we've already read in one of the two stories to compare author's style and craft to see if we see commonalities. And a part of me is not sure that I want to do that. I probably will just because it's not going to hurt them. And then um, we're also going to read some Clap When You Land. I must say I am very proud of myself for just staying on schedule, especially with things like Clap When You Land. Um, I always try and bring novels in, I feel like, every year. And then it just takes forever to get through the novel. Whereas this year, I'm like, we have to get through these novels within the span of a month. And I just have to make sure the kids know that you're going to have to read on your own to some degree, but also really be mindful of the time that I use in class so that we do have opportunities to read together. And so far, for the first few weeks of school, I've been doing a very good job of that. And for that, I'm proud of myself. So, all right, I just got to school. I'm about to park the car. I will definitely check in with you later. Wish me luck. I hope I wake up because I am so sleepy right now, but all I can say is... Thank God it's Friday. That's a very weird thing to See, at least from the beginning of the order, this stuff doesn't look good. Why is there so many? Because they put hard work. We're trying to work hard two years. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, cheese, cheese. Oh, sorry. We're all watching. 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 We're all what are you doing? Kubasa. What is your YouTube channel? Yeah. What do you mean? What is it? Like what's like what's the name of it? What are you I'll give you a card. Okay. I'm sorry. Um. Here's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna show you the slide. So your posters are all around the room. We're gonna use a strategy called graffiti talk. And I'm gonna put up the slide that shows you the directions because I forgot to do that for a moment, please. Right, here we go. So we're gonna use a strategy called graffiti talk. So again, you guys took a survey at the beginning of the year to tell me basically what kind of learner you are or what kind of environments do you feel like you will learn the best. So graffiti talk, anytime you see these slides, it's gonna say BA and that's telling you this particular activity is validating and affirming or appreciating those students that said, I am a kinesthetic learner or a spontaneous um, learner or sociocentric. Kinesthetic means I need to move around. I can't really sit still for long periods of time. Uh, sociocentric means I like to be socialized or I'd like to be able to socialize while I'm learning. And spontaneous means I like to be able to just talk freely. I don't always wanna raise my hand when I have something to say. I want the freedom to just kind of talk as I'm thinking, okay? Um, so this is what you're going to do. You see that there's several posters around the room. Does everybody see that? Yes. All of your posters are around the room. How many of them are there, everybody? Seven. seven, because there are seven table groups. Sometimes on those posters, a question is going to be posed to you about the information presented. Today, there is no question on the poster because you're going to be responding to the questions in your workbook on pages eight and nine. Okay. Your goal is to get to as many posters as possible within the time given. Sometimes I'm gonna say, I don't expect you to get to all of them, but today and for the purpose of what we're using this for, 
I do expect you to get to all of them and you should be able to do it without any problems. It is currently 135, class is over, school is over in about 55 minutes. It should not take you, it should not take you 55 minutes to get this done. The only reason it should is that you are moving very slowly, you are not using your time efficiently and you're wasting time. So this time around, I do expect you to get them all done. And then as a class, probably not today, we'll discuss what the correct responses should be. So for example, everybody look where it says section four, uh -huh. okay? Um, when you're walking around looking at these posters, do you need to fill in information about the main geographic features of the Northwest Coast? No. No, because it's already provided for you. So any box that is blank, you should be getting that information from one of these posters. Make sure you pay attention to the fact that it's telling you what region you're talking about at the top. I do believe there's two regions that were not assigned to a group because there are more regions than there are groups. So you're gonna leave those blank and we will fill those in later. Make sense? Okay. Um, so when you are walking around, you should be traveling with your book and with a pencil. Um, you can go to the posters and work with the people around you. You do not have to travel with your group. You can work with the people that happen to be at that poster, but the sound of your voice should sound like we're in the library. It just should sound like people are quietly talking, but I should not be able to identify what you're saying, which means you should be using a whispered voice, which means when you're talking and you touch your throat, you should feel no vibration because you're talking that quietly, okay? What you don't want to do is make me think that you're dancing around with your friends this whole time. Like, I'm not really working. I'm just moving around, looking busy with my friend, but we're really not filling out any information. That's going to burn my bucket. That's going to frost, frost my cookies. That's going to not itch it. <laughs> make, it's not going to itch it. That's going to make my booty itch. Okay. And it's going to grind my gears. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what my family says. <laughs> when something really annoys you, it makes your booty itch. And we've all had an itchy booty before, and it's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> let's, I mean, let's be real. I'm, let's be real. Yes, friend? Good question. Which one is the Arctic? Because she's looking at the chart and being proactive and saying, whoa, I don't see ours on here. The Arctic is on page seven. It looks a little different because it's in its own little chart. It's at the bottom of page seven. Okay. Please look up here. If you don't get this done today, guess what you have over the weekend? Homework. I am telling you, you should have no problem getting it done because it's not super complicated information. At the very bottom of the chart, it does ask you to draw a symbol representing that particular region. You can use the symbol they put on theirs. Okay. Are there any clarifying questions you need to have answered? Are we gonna be doing this for the entire class? Just... We should not be spending 55 minutes doing this. It might take you 20 to 25 minutes. That'll be on that group. So let's, there was one group in homeroom where they were paying attention. They didn't follow directions. So their chart did not provide the information needed. What that means for them is they won't get a good grade on their chart. What that means for you is you might have to look for that information a little bit later when I give you time to do that. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So I'm going to say the magic word, which is what? <laughs> You're going to stand up and push in your chair, and then I'm going to tell you to go, and you can go to whatever poster you choose to. Uh, be logical, and if you see a lot of people on one poster and no one at another, which one should you go to? Because if you try and go, I'm going to go where everybody else is going, you're going to be slowed down. So they're spread out. You don't have to travel with your group. You can do this on your own. Got it? Got it. Barbie, are you going to push in your chair?
I don't even have the words, you guys. It's 2.45ish, the day is done, school's over, I just got back from after school duty, um, and I am just exhausted. As the same I was when I was talking to you this morning, I believe. Now the good news is, is the day went well. Like everything that I intended to happen today happened, especially with leadership. I don't know if I mentioned it, but this year as the eighth grade leadership teacher that kind of is the guiding force of sixth and seventh grade leadership, what I really wanted to do this year, one of my big goals with leadership is to bring clubs back on campus because prior to me being here, the school used to have several clubs and then they just kind of went away. I'm not really sure why. And I wanted to bring them back just to create a more engaging middle school experience for as many kids as possible. So this week was club rush week. And so the theory behind it was Monday through Thursday, the kids are informed of the different clubs that we're gonna be offering on campus. We're gonna offer chess club, dance crew, color guard, performing arts and EYL, which is a leadership program that is specifically geared toward female students. And so we have this news broadcast that is put on by a seventh grade leadership class and they kind of gave information all week about it. And then today at lunch was the day that kids could come up to the stage outside, sign up for the clubs they're interested in so they can attend an informational meeting um, within the near future and then be a part of that club. So we've never done that before. So all of that had to be taken care of. So I needed to make sure like there were tables out, the tables were decorated, the club advisors had everything that they needed. Um, just really making sure it ran smoothly. And as simple as that sounds, like there's a lot of little things that go on to, with stuff like that, like decorations and blowing up balloons and getting the leadership kids to get things um, done in a timely fashion. So I would say that was a success. That was the big, uh, thing today that I needed to accomplish um, and I did and then in both classes we got through pretty much what I thought was going to happen my switch class is pretty caught up that's the second class that I have in the afternoon that's always a little bit behind they are caught up with my homeroom class now they did their posters on the different cultural regions um, and their posters came out really good and I I don't like to compare but they're go to the sixth grade parking lot I feel like their posters came out a little bit better. They were more artistic. They were easier to read. I really like the strategy. I think I got some footage of me explaining to them how it goes. It's called Graffiti Talk. And now, instead of reading that whole chapter in TCI on the different cultural groups, um, rep, or the different Native American cultural groups, they got all of that information. Again, the battery on this camera ran out, so... I was mid-sentence and now I'm in a different location. But I was saying they got all the information in one setting instead of stretching it out over over several days, which kind of takes away from time that I have later in the year when I want us to get to different historical aspects in US history. So all in all, the day went well. It was just very frenzied and very busy. I didn't really have time to catch my breath, I felt like. I felt like I was answering questions left and right. Um, and so now I need to pack up really quickly and socialize. Um, there's like a happy hour type thing and I'm trying to be better about that this year. Just um, like any job, there are people that I get along with really well here and that I know really well and there's people that I don't really know at all and there's people that it's struggle to be quite honest um, and, and that's okay but as a leadership teacher and trying to promote a healthy environment for staff members I want to make an effort this year to go to more of those so I'm really going to make an appearance because then I have to fly out of there to get my nails done and they need to be done because I have these four nails but I do not have that one the gel came off of that and the nail broke so I don't I can't really talk too much in class because I need to get ready to go and um, after that I'm gonna get a manicure and I can almost guarantee you that I'm going to be exhausted by the time I get home and I'm not gonna wanna vlog. So let's just let's just end the vlog here. I don't even know what this vlog is gonna look like. It feels like it might be a little disjointed, but hey, that's life sometimes. So um, I'm gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna really make a conscientious effort to vlog more regularly, but also stay balanced and not vlog if it's too much for me. Um, and so yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please do that. I would love it if you commented. That does help my channel out and keeps me motivated to keep going. And as always, I hope that you're well. And if you're not well, please be well. And I will see you in the next vlog. Until then.